Hi, it's Tybug, and today we will be making some feta cheese bread. I decided to film this a little bit differently than my regular cooking videos because I did not feel like getting ready and I've put this off for a very long time. On the screen, you will see the ingredients when I'm putting them in. I probably won't be verbalizing that, so just pay attention to that. I'll also have uh, the recipe down below in my description. And I found this recipe on Pinterest by a creator called Demetria's Dishes. Uh, they have some really great recipes and they are of Greek heritage. So go check them out. I'll have it linked down below. But I found this recipe because I'm going through my Percy Jackson phase. I did not have my Percy Jackson phase in middle school like most people did. So when I looked up Greek recipes, this was one of the first things that came up and I was very excited to try it. But I was kind of like putting it off because for some reason, bread is very intimidating to me because you have like the whole starter situation. And I had always been intimidated by that idea of the starter. I don't know why, but like when during the pandemic, you know, everyone was making sourdough bread and they had to do sourdough starters. So it just seems so complicated. So I've never made bread before. But I am so excited to make this. As you can see, I had a little bit of difficulty mixing it because with the stand mixer, it wasn't doing so great. So I kind of intervened every now and then. So now we're just going to let this sit and see if the starter takes. And apparently once it has like a sort of a, a milky, foggy sort of uh, overlay, I don't really know how to describe it, then that means the starter is fine. On the website... It's said that most starters will work. It's just depending on if your yeast is still viable or not, which, okay, I didn't know it could expire. So now I am moving on to actually making the dough. And, you know, making the dough is pretty similar to making like cookies and cake mixes. So I wasn't too intimidated by this factor, but it did use a lot more flour than I expected. And I don't know why I didn't expect it to use a lot of flour, but it did. And I broke my measuring cup. Uh, I didn't, I couldn't believe that this happened. Like I didn't know it was possible to break, but luckily I could just kind of slip it back on there. So it was good as new. So yeah, I basically used up all the flour in my house. So I had to go get some more flour. And then this is the salt I'm putting in. I don't have my salt in like the typical container because there's so much moisture where I, where I live. So it will clump up very easily. So like I keep most of my things in jars. So that helps with that problem. And then we're going in with the olive oil. And I kind of just hate olive oil sometimes. Like I love the taste of olive oil, but the container is just such a pain to use because it's just like there's oil all over it all the time like and I don't know why and I see I'm having a struggle trying to close the container because it's so oily and now I just I'm so glad I got this stand mixer because now I can have this work while I'm gone and I don't know why I did that it's not for 20 minutes it's for, it's for 10 minutes but you know I don't have to stand and monitor this while it's mixing so this was a great Black Friday purchase and I really do say if you want to cook get this because like hand mixers are horrible it's such a pain to use and this just like made it super easy and I made sure to clean off the sides just so everything got mixed up but this uh bread sort of mixer attachment really worked super well and it was pretty sticky so I kind of had to scrape off the the kneading attachment but Mostly it came off in one piece, so it wasn't too much of a hassle. But yeah, it did stick to absolutely everything. But I guess that's what bread does. Honestly, this is still my first time making bread, so don't forget that. So I don't really know what I'm doing, as always. That's how most of my cooking videos go, but I usually find my way to finagle something or other and make it work and I feel like that's the best way to learn how to cook because obviously you're not going to do everything perfectly every single time 
and you just kind of need to be prepared to think on the go and adjust your priorities. And now it said to oil the bowl and I didn't want to put my mix into a new bowl. So I put olive oil on my hands so it hypothetically wouldn't stick to my hands as much. And that did not work. I don't know if I had to like put more oil on my hands. But anyways, I started to move the dough a little bit out of the way so I could pour oil down the sides of the bowl. And you know, this is what I mean by thinking on the fly because I, there was no instructions on how to do this. So I kind of just was like, I'm just gonna pour some oil in here and spread it around. But then this made like the dough super sticky. So it was, I, I mean, it worked, but it just wasn't that great of an idea in my opinion. <laughs> but it, it, if it works, it works. So yeah, it just, it stuck to everything. And then there was dough sticking to the sides that I just kind of covered in more oil. And then in my hands, it was on everything. And then obviously I didn't have any hands to pour with. So I kind of just had to use my arms and hope for the best. So there wasn't a lot of control in this step of the process, but I tried my best. And I also made sure that the dough was mixed up while I was doing this just to see if there were any chunks of flour or anything that just didn't mix properly. But yeah, I I put a lot of oil in this bowl. So obviously this kind of affects how the bread is going to taste. So I couldn't tell you how much oil I put in there, but there's a lot of oil in there, like a lot of olive oil in there. But you know, it's a Greek recipe, so olive oil is essential. And now I'm just kind of cleaning off of the sides and trying to mix in some more of the dough that kind of got left on the sides so it's not all separated. But yeah, this was a pain to get off my hands. And then I was kind of scared to wash it down the sink, but I did it anyways. And then I took this off the stand mixer and I'm going to cover it with some plastic to let it rise in heat, I guess, because it needs to be warm. So they also said to put it in a warm area so it can rise. And I didn't really know where a warm area was because it was kind of cold today. So I put it in my bathroom. <laughs> and I cut my finger right there. Like real, it wasn't so bad, but like it was worse than a paper cut but it wasn't like a knife cut, so it hurt, but yeah, I didn't like it. But look at my little paper cut. Like you can't even see it. Oh, well, but now I just need to let it rise. And I put on a little Hello Kitty Band-Aid, but since I need to, you know, work with the dough still, I didn't want to have like my exposed boo-boo touching the raw dough, so I put on some plastic gloves, which was absolutely one of the worst decisions I've ever had I mean it worked as <laughs> see, that's probably a common theme it's a bad decision but it works because the dough was so sticky that every time I would try to manage it it would pull the gloves so I was constantly putting on and off my gloves and it was a pain but then it said to spread oil over the pan and this will come back to bite me in a little bit, but not yet. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, see, it's just sticking to the gloves. But I guess it's said to oil the pan so the dough doesn't stick to the pan while you're working in the, the feta cheese filling and uh, kind of kneading it. It says to press the, the dough into a 15 inch circle. Obviously, I didn't measure how big I would press the circle into, but I was kind of just mixing in all of the excess oil that was on the sides of my bowl. And now I'm just pouring it onto my oiled pan. And in a moment, you will see me kneading it. Oh, there goes my glove. Hello, glove. Come back. Come back home. ET phone home. And look at that. 
Look at that bowl. I'm gonna have to soak this in soapy water for like hours. Oh, and you can see my camera. Look at it. Look at it looking down on me. <laughs> and there's the dough. It looks really good. Oh, and by the way, when you set it aside to rise, it should be double the size of what it was. And of course, again, I didn't measure that. I kind of just eyeballed it. And now I'm... <laughs> I'm flipping around the dough because I need to knead it but I didn't really want to like keep pressing it because then it would keep pulling my gloves off which was a pain but look it, it kept separating so instead of like pulling it apart I did as the recipe said and actually pressed it you know because that was the directions and I thought I knew better which obviously I don't because I've never made bread before so listen to instructions, Ty. And now I am getting the star of the show, the feta cheese. The reason why I kind of uh, sniffed the cheese is because I had had it in the fridge for months. Luckily, this feta cheese didn't go bad until the next month. But I was still a little bit hesitant about it because I had had it for so long. But I got pre-crumbled feta cheese because it said to crumble it in the recipe and then I don't know why I started to crumble it on my own because I thought it needed to be even smaller but that is not the case so yeah there you'll see I kind of just gave up and just dumped it all out because why would I go through the extra work of crumbling it when it's already pre-crumbled and I specifically got pre-crumbled feta cheese some of the chunks were pretty big though so I kind of broke that up a little bit but now I'm kind of regretting breaking them up because the big chunks of cheese is like where this recipe thrives and I'm checking this case again because you know just in case don't want to get sick uh, I hate food poisoning I really do and then uh, we're just spreading that all out and making sure every single inch of bread will get some cheese in it because feta cheese bread is meant to have a feta cheese. And now I'm bringing in the edges to cover up the cheese so it's all tucked in there nice and safe. This was actually pretty easy. I thought it was going to resist a little bit more, but it was easy peasy lemon squeezy. And now I have a nice little wrapped up feta cheese bread. And I kind of just punched that down to make sure it was... You know, it wouldn't take so long to cook because when it's super thick, it's going to take forever to cook. And already my oven is a, a little challenged. And now it's said to either oil the pan or put parchment paper on it. And obviously I... Wait a second. My pan was already oiled. No, it's said to put flour on the pan. And I didn't want to take a whole new pan, so I decided to put parchment paper. And I would. it's said to flip over the bread, which was absolutely impossible to do so it kind of just rolled into itself and I am trying to fix it here but not super successful so there's like a really thin layer of dough and then a lot of cheese and then a really thick layer of dough so the cheese is not super evenly distributed and a lot of openings opened up in the dough so I kind of was trying to figure something out because it there was just cheese everywhere now it wasn't like all uniformed and then this is where I regret putting the olive oil on the pan because now I have this parchment paper on top of the olive oil and I was terrified that the parchment paper was gonna like catch on fire and burn and that would have been horrible but I I decided to take the risk which maybe I shouldn't have but I did it and now I need to cover up the bread with a little I used a, a kitchen towel and we're doing this to let the bread rise again I did not realize how many times I needed to let the bread rise for, but I had to let it rise so many times. So this whole process really took me an entire day to do. And then the next step, it said to punch some holes into the bread because 
for the butter, I guess, but punching the holes into it was another impossible task because every time I would stick my finger in, the dough would just come with me. So then there weren't like any indentations. It would just be like little raised sections of dough instead of indented sections of dough. So this really frustrated me and I felt like, why am I even doing this? Why am I putting myself through the pain of punching in all of these holes that aren't actually holes? And then because the dough is so not evenly distributed, I kept hitting the cheese and then I would have to cover up the cheese again. And it, it I think I just made it a lot harder than it needed to be. I don't know how I could have made it easier, but... I, this is how it happens for me. I hit challenges and I either ignore them or do something on the fly. So I had thought I had punched enough indentations at that point. So I wasn't going to uh, worry myself over it anymore because what's the point? So then I spread some melted butter over everything. That looks like it says 20 ounces of melted butter, but it's two ounces of melted butter for your information. 20 ounces would be ridiculous. So common sense. And then I had to spread the butter over because it was just a little bit hard to pour it on everything. So I messy hands is a sign of a good kitchen. Quote me on that. And I was just re-emphasizing the indentations. And honestly, it was a lot easier to put in the indentations after the butter was on. So maybe that is a great tip. Also, you're going to preheat the oven to 425 Fahrenheit or 220 Celsius. So it will bake for 30 minutes. For me, it kind of baked closer to an hour because my, my oven doesn't like me. But this is my bread. Look at it. Look at how beautiful and golden it is. I put sesame seeds on it before I put it in the oven. I just didn't film that. And it is so good. The outside is crispy and the inside is like really soft and fluffy. And then the cheese is, it was heavenly. Like I, I don't know how I can live without this bread now. Like I wanted to just take a little check section of it to try. But then I kept wanting more and more and more. And it, it's so good. I think I put a little bit too much sesame seeds on there, though, because that changed the flavor a little bit. But it's delicious. Delicioso. I really recommend you trying this. And for storage, I didn't know how I was going to do this, but I decided to cut them up into little pieces. And I put some into Tupperware and some into a plastic baggie. But this made me so much bread and I can't wait to eat it all. And I really hope you guys try it and I'll see you guys next time. Make sure to follow me, like, and subscribe.